I remember sleeping on the floor, mama, she was broke. Was taking showers in the cold. And I remember seeing niggas sell dough, buying cars and clothes. So that's the only thing I know. We had no house, no lights, no car. We ain't had no food. I said, suck! On my 19th birthday, my stoner friend convinced me to try his medications, as he called them. Unfortunately, me agreeing to give some to my inexperienced friend led to horrible consequences. I experienced unimaginable pain and suffered for a few solid years after the incident. It all started at school that day. I decided to invite my two best friends for a sleepover. Let's call them Steve and Chris for the sake of the story. Steve and I went to the same class and we've known each other since childhood. The second friend, Chris, was a year younger than me. We were really close friends and always stuck together. All of us went to the same school back then and just to clarify, in my country you graduate from high school when you're 19 years old. So at 9am, Steve approached me when I was collecting books for my morning classes. We shook hands and talked about some school stuff. Suddenly, he changed the subject and we started talking about the party. Hey man, thanks for inviting me to your house today. Of course, dude. How am I going to spend my birthday without my best friend? That's why I got you a really special birthday present. Oh, really? What is it? You're going to love it, dude, but I can't tell you right now. It's a surprise. Uh, alright man, I like surprises. Keep it a secret till tonight. Hell no. Oh, and aside from me, did you invite anyone else? What about Chris? He'll be there. I wanted to invite more people, but after last year's party, my parents didn't allow it. You were there, so you know. I remember, that was a crazy party, dude. They were so pissed after Kyle broke the window. Yeah, that was so wrong. Anyways, I got classes, dude. Remember, 8pm, my house, tonight. Gotcha. Later, dude. I turned around and went to my class. I didn't think much about Steve's gift for me back then. I guessed it was some kind of liquor like usually when we partied. He was always the type of guy who liked to drink and party a lot. I was inviting him from time to time to my house and he always had a bottle of vodka with him so I thought that's what he would give me as a birthday present. I wasn't expecting anything more creative from him. Fast forward to 7pm, I finished school and went home. I went inside the house and luckily my parents were already gone. They decided to leave town after I asked them to because I wanted us to have the whole house to ourselves. I threw my backpack on my bed and started to get ready for the party. I turned the music on and prepared mattresses for my friends. I ordered some pizza and sat down on the couch waiting for them. It was almost 8.30pm when I heard the doorbell ringing. Finally, they're here, I thought to myself. I run to the doors and open them. Hey, I was worried about you. Don't act like my mom, dude. Just take your gift. Thanks, dude. Come inside. We took the wrong bus, and that's why we're late. Well, now that you're finally here, I say we start drinking. Drinking? Oh, come on. That's for kids. When he said that, I was really surprised. At first, I thought he finally matured. And Mature my ass. At this point, I would have just been like... in a box if we're not drinking what's in a box because you get the box and fill it in the bill you get the no i'm not even gonna do it because it's over the joke is over it's done i i, 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 I caught it up i caught the joke up there it is Saying that that phrase there it is, it's like an inside joke at my job. I used to say it all the time. There it is. I hate this mustache. Like I'm I'm wolfing it right now. Like this mustache is like now it's like curving into my like into my in my mouth. And I can taste it. I gotta trim it. I gotta trim my whole beard. Yeah. But, but. I would have just been like, I would have been really hesitant about opening that, that box. Because if we're not drinking, then what are we doing? And stop drinking so much, so I asked him, No way, Steve, you, you don't drink anymore? Nah, man, I just stepped up my game. I got something way better for you, birthday boy. 
I looked at him with eyes wide open. I was really excited and afraid at the same time. I still couldn't figure out what it was. I didn't want to wait much longer and invited the guys upstairs to my bedroom. Alright, take off your shoes and let's go upstairs. We all walked upstairs and went into my room. I closed the curtains and we sat in a circle. Steve looked at both of us and pulled a bag full of colorful drops from his backpack. Oh, uh, what's this? It's ecstasy. A friend of mine is a supplier and he's legit. He ensured me that it's clean. Take one, that should be enough. When I saw the bag, I didn't freak out or anything. I always wanted to try ecstasy and I heard that it's harmless. I wanted to have fun that night and I trusted Steve, so I took one without hesitation. We were all excited about this new experience and didn't think that it could affect us that badly. Chris and Steve also took one. We decided to sit down on the couch and watch TV before the pills kicked in. But after about 20 minutes, I couldn't feel anything other than my stomach hurting. And neither of my friends looked like they were tripping or had any effect. Do you feel anything? Uh, no. Me neither. Maybe they don't work? Let's just take one more. Nah, man. I'll pass. My stomach hurts a little bit from the first drop. Because of what happened next... I think my stomach hurting saved my life back then. They grabbed the bag, took one more, and after a few minutes, even more. Wow. My stomach started to hurt really badly. After a while, I was feeling nauseous and dizzy. I guess that the drop started to work, but it wasn't a nice feeling. I straightened up on the couch and turned my head left to see how my friends were reacting. At first, it seemed like they were mindlessly watching TV and feeling well, but then I asked them, Hey, how you guys feeling? No response. I could only see them blinking while looking at the TV. I was really confused as to why they're not answering me, so I- What do you mean? How you got feeling? Okay, off no racist shit, I'm not trying to be that person. But... Oh, fuck. I'm so tired. <laughs> they're white. And so when when white people like it's like whatever is on their skin is noticeable. So you don't see that red, all that red shit on their face and under the and, and like under the eyes. You don't see that. You talking about how you feeling? You good? You how you doing? Really? You don't see all that redness now. If they were black, you know what I mean. It wouldn't have been that the redness. On their face and in the eyes and under the eyes, just all over. It would it probably you probably you probably would have seen the redness, but it wouldn't have been as strong as it is on white people. It's just the color of their skin. It just makes it a whole lot worse. They look dead. Asked again. Hey gents, you hear me? Still no response. Then it hit me. I noticed saliva pouring out of Chris's open mouth, and his eyes were slowly hiding under his eyelids. I started to panic. Steve didn't look too well, but he finally said something to me. I'm not feeling well. He told me to do it. I said no. What are you talking about, dude? Look at Chris. He looks like a zombie right now. I don't think that that's how those drops are supposed to work. What do we do? Steve ignored me and mumbled something to himself, talking about some evil guy or something. I couldn't exactly understand him. I was terrified. I was the only one technically sober at this point. I felt a sudden rush of adrenaline and my heart started to beat faster and faster. My dizziness and stomach ache didn't want to stop. I got up and sat next to Chris, then grabbed him by his shoulders and shook him. Hey, Chris, you alright, dude? Say something. Hey, Chris, you in there, buddy? Speak. Damn. Chris looked like he was unconscious and even stopped blinking. His skin was slowly turning pale. I couldn't feel a pulse or any sign that he was breathing. I suspected that he overdosed, but I didn't know what to do in the situation. Chris's condition was getting worse and worse. Steve, Steve, you gotta help me, dude. Chris isn't breathing. What do we do? Uh, no, leave me alone. He then put his head on his lap and started to swing his body. I stepped away from him. There was only one thing left to do. I knew this would lead to really bad consequences, but I had to save my friend's life. I was petrified, but I pulled myself together and ran to get my phone from the charger and called for an ambulance. The rest of the night I only vaguely remember. 
Maybe because of the drug or maybe because of the paralyzing fear. It didn't take long for paramedics to arrive. They took us immediately to the hospital and performed CPR on Chris on the way. I remember they took Chris into one room and me and Steve into another. They assigned me a bed and I fell asleep immediately. After waking up, I heard the news and burst out in tears. Chris didn't make it. Steve was fine but he was throwing up all day and suffered extremely. It turned out that the pills weren't clean. They were laced with PMA, a substance that's much more toxic than MDMA and takes longer to kick in. That's why we couldn't feel anything for so long and apparently Chris took a fatal dose. Steve was sentenced to five years in prison for sharing the pills with us and fortunately I was only fined with about $5,000 and 100 hours of community service. My family was understandably angry and ashamed of me. I lost their trust, I think for the rest of my life. I won't even mention the nightmares and anxiety I had for many years after the accident. Another, like, sad story. Jesus. Well, now you know. See, it's kind of alright. So, I can't really speak on drugs. Because I don't do them. But. <sighs> nope, I'm not even going to do it. I'm not even going to. I was going to talk about. I was gonna talk about something. Okay, so I don't smoke, but I don't know if weed is a drug or not, but I'm just gonna use it as an example. I don't know much about weed, so don't come at me in the comment section. I'm just using this as an example. Excuse me. If you want to get your, if you want to get some, okay, I'm not. Gonna, if you don't get something from somebody, right? Just in general, if you don't get some something from somebody, make sure you either, you know what I mean. Make sure you check it. Make sure it's not laced. Make sure it's from a reliable source. You know what I mean, like. That's why people have their own peoples that they get stuff, certain things from. You know what I mean? Like, my friend smokes weed, and she gets it from, uh, like, she she has people. She don't really get weed from people she don't know. Then that makes sense, because you don't know what's in that weed. But you just got to be careful, because, like I said before, like, there's some crooked clucked up people in here that want to see you clucked up. There's some people in this world with some bad intentions. And that's just, that's just, that's bad. That is so horrible. And it's like, God damn, why? Though, like, why would you do that to somebody? And ecstasy, I don't even know what ecstasy does to the body. And I don't even know what it does, so like, as a, on a uh, re reaction level. I just know it's bad. I just don't know exactly what it does to you or makes you do. I just know it's not really good for you. And I've seen like videos and movies of people on ecstasy, and it's like, from what I've seen, ecstasy is not is not good at all. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is good. Maybe it's not. I don't know. All I've all I've seen, I I only seen like the negative part of ecstasy. May is there a good part in it, or is it all bad? Just watch when you get certain things from from people that's about it but I hope uh, he learned his lesson to one 
not take ecstasy. Two, if you're going to get something from somebody, make sure make sure it's a reliable, credible source. And three, check it. It's just like eating food. You know what I mean? You look at what you're about, about to eat. I believe you look at your food. You look at what you're about to put in your body. People, yeah, you live and you learn. That's all I got to say about that. You live and you learn. Some people learn the good. Some people learn the, the easy way. Some people learn the hard way. Either way, you learn. But keep it cool. Keep it classy. I love you. Stay happy. My family.